Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to worship this morning as we are celebrating today our contemporary service. And uh, because of that, the songs will all be through the sound system and the words will be on the screens in addition to the printed bulletin if you grabbed one of those on your way in. Um, our songs are completely new ones today. Okay, I'm just warning you up front. These are all songs we have not sung before here. Now, some of them have been on the radio for years, and so you probably have heard them before if you listen to Christian music, okay? Uh, but I'm just warning you, these are completely new hymns, or new songs uh, and hymns, but again, they're real easy tunes, real easy melodies, and we have somebody singing in the background, uh, so that'll help us today. Um, all the, the songs deal with the end times, because guess what we're talking about today? The end. It's coming. One day. We don't know when. You guys are awake. Just checking, okay. Just get nothing. Now, normally I get a little cheesy, but nothing today, okay. Uh, anyway, so service is pretty straightforward. We'll have normal continuous line communion. There were the kits back there if you prefer to take communion in the pew, so hopefully you grab those on your way in. Would encourage everybody at some point to fill out the little announcement bulletin, or not announcement bulletin, attendance card. For members, it lets us know you're here. For guests, if you would like a phone call, check where it says interested in membership. If you're wondering about taking communion, on the back side, it lists this is what we believe the Lord's doing for us in the Lord's Supper. And so if you uh, agree with the statements, you're more than welcome to come up and commune with us today. Uh, we will have a children's sermon today. The bulletin, if you look at the, the song, our sermon hymn by Matt Marr, when we start that last, we are waiting on the promised Jesus. That is when if the kids want to get up and go out for the children's sermon, they're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but otherwise, how about we stand up and greet each other, and then we'll begin with our opening song. Right. Well, blessings now as we sing our opening song today, The Lord is by my side. Your goodness and love, they have followed me 
rise for the invocation. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sin in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an, to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. The Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 7 through 16. Be silent before the Lord God, for the days of the Lord is near. 
The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traitors are no more. All who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and will punish men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do well. Their, God, their goods shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and a battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. The epistle reading is 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like that, surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in, a, in, the, in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also and he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was owned with, the in with interest. 
So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who will be more given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn. Hear the angels sing, there's hope for everyone. To announce our King, there's hope for everyone. What good news they bring, there's hope for everyone. Angels sing, there's hope for everyone. They came from afar. Oh 
keeps continuing. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you guys to picture your family's table this morning. Picture you've left to go get food from one of our local restaurants. Maybe you're getting pizza from the rendezvous. You guys never go get pizza there? Okay. There's other places too, but yeah, but that's where we go. But anyways, moving on. Um, picture you've left, and you expect when you come home, what should the table look like? It should be ready to eat, yeah. You're coming home to a hungry family, and that hungry family, you've taught them. Here's what we do when we eat. You put plates out. You get forks and silverware. You get the condiments out and drinks for everyone. Picture you come home from wherever you went to get food, and the table is empty. Your family is fighting down in the basement. Nobody's upstairs. Now you could be a good parent and just eat your food and they'll figure it out when the food, you know, they get hungry. They'll come upstairs later, right? It'll be cold. But no. Picture what God would do in that situation. Picture almost like a yelling old man in the midst of the arguing in the basement, yelling, be silent. Now that's the way the end will be. Don't take my word for it. Let's read from both our epistle lesson and our gospel lesson. Let's tie together today why Jesus is talking about this parable of the talents when he's dealing with the end time. So let's read from the, the first, the, the epistle reading first. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. And now from our gospel reading. For to everyone who has will be more given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. One of the themes that we have seen throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament of God's people is that they don't get what God is doing. They're constantly changing what God tells them to try to fit with what they think about the world around them. Instead of understanding what God is saying. In our Old Testament lesson for today, God was angry at the people. He was angry at the people because they were so busy cheating and stealing from each other that they were ignoring Him. That they weren't acting in a way toward each other in the way that He wanted them to. This is the way a parent feels. When their children are sitting at that table, that same table where you've made them food or you've gone and got them food, that same table where now it's set, everything's out, and those kids are yelling at each other, well, they forgot the condiments, they forgot the forks, nobody got plates. Into that context, as a parent, what do you do? What my dad would do is he'd slam his hand down on the table. Remember Pastor Barnuman, he'd do this for you too. Be silent! I just yell at him. I'm kind of tempted to start throwing food, but then that might lead to a food fight. Yeah, I don't know, you know. But where's this frustration come from? Because they don't get it. The Israelite people, God's chosen people, the children of Abraham, the children of the Exodus, they didn't get why God had saved them. They had become proud. They had become arrogant. They had become so arrogant to the point that they thought they could cheat and screw each other over 
and God would do nothing. So what did God promise? Listen up, my children. There's going to be a day when I come again and there will be judgment. But there will also be mercy. There's going to be a day when I come again and I restore all of my children who have been scattered to all the nations, scattered in the wind. But for those of you, those of you who turned away from my ways, there will be judgment. Jesus speaks about this in our gospel lesson for today. With these talents. He's not talking about money literally. I mean, he is literally talking about it. But the figurative sense of what he's getting at is that when God gives us abilities, when God gives us a purpose, when God gives us a commission, like what he says in Matthew 28, go therefore... Make disciples when he comes again. He's going to demand an accounting. How did we do? As parents, we see how well we did. We can see it when we look at our children, now adults. We can see it when we look at how our children raise their children. The proof is in the pudding, the saying goes. When they raise their children to have good values, when they teach their children the right things, when their children excel, that's where we can see the work that we did. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes we could do everything just like God did everything for the Israelites and for whatever reason, they chose a different path. But the whole point of the parable of the talents is God is saying, while there is still day, while there's still time left in all of my creation, before I come again in judgment, now's the time to do my work. Now's the time not only to be ready yourself, to ready your family, to ready your neighbor. Why? Because night's coming. Judgment's coming. A new creation is coming. See, the thing that concerns me most as a pastor today, your pastor is I look out at our world and I see a world where we are falling asleep. Picture your spouse, ladies, who you've given a job. One thing, one thing you've asked them to do that night. And you come in and you see them in their recliner kind of doing this thing. That one thing you've asked them to do, and they're starting to fall asleep. Maybe that one thing is watch a movie with me. Yeah, I'll do that. About 10 minutes into the Hallmark movie. They haven't even gotten to the cookie scene yet. <laughs> I watch them with you every so often, babe. <laughs> I ruined the Hallmark movies. Yet. They've actually come out with some new plots. I can't do my normal thing anymore. I have to really watch now. Yeah. Yeah. But you give you give people something to do and they don't do it. As Christians, we spend so much of our time in Christianity today trying to figure out when the end will be that we have forgotten what Paul says here in 1 Thessalonians. What Jesus himself said throughout the Gospels. That Jesus himself doesn't even know the day or the time. Only the Father knows the time. The devil is lulling us to sleep. Being so concerned about, is this war in the Holy Land going to be the end? Is Magog going to arise with Gog? Who cares? Think about that a second. Who cares? 
if World War III starts today, if nuclear rain falls upon us all, because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross and in the empty tomb, it will not matter. That's God's be silent. That's God's reminding us what's most important. Geopolitical nonsense means nothing to God. Health. We think as Christians that because we are faithful, because we believe, we are going to have an easy life. Jesus promises the opposite. That because of his name, we will be persecuted. We will be mocked. We will be spit upon. In fact, he calls us blessed to be these things. To have these things happen to us. Why? Because this is what matters. Paul, in his writing, seizes upon this idea. Whether I live, I live for Christ. Whether I die, I die for Christ. That in the end, all that matters is what Jesus has done for us. And so I'm reminding you this morning once again, what's the most important thing? That while there's still day, we tell our friends, our neighbors, our children, our grandchildren, while there's still day, we teach them the most important thing of all, this. And we point them here for salvation. Because whether we live 20, 30, 40 years more, whether we die tonight or tomorrow, whether nuclear rain falls upon us or the trumpet sounds, regardless of what the future holds, because of this, it holds eternal life. Because of this, one day you and I will live beyond all of this hot mess of the world and live for eternity because he loved you and I so much. He died for us. He rose for us. And while we yet have life, we need to tell others. This is our story. This is our hope. This is the job we've been given. When he comes again, will we have made five more believers from the five in our family? Or will we have buried our talent in the dirt and no one believe? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Depart in his peace and joy. Amen. Now to this end, I'm going to use a song this morning. Uh, to, to teach this. Um, this is a new song, newer song by Matthew West. We're going to stay seated as we sing it. We'll collect the offering afterwards. Uh, but think of this as our last song. Just keep on singing. 
sing it until the last song ends. I've sung in cars and offices when the radio comes on, and on a thousand stages while the crowd sings along. But when the lights go out and when the show is done, my heart keeps on singing to an audience of one. As long as I. by collecting our offer. now for the prayers of our church. Our special prayers today, we continue to pray for Dale Wolfsky and Hayes Jaden, James Smithwick and Bonnie Christensen, Brandy Lefebvre, Pat Mathieu, 
for Melody and Marie, for Michael Lampy and Michael Funk, for Patty Fry and John Corbiser, for Paul Rank, Faye Purdell, Michelle Phillips, Peggy Measler, Charlie Peisler, Jeff Lampy, and Deb Roser. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that in the midst of the world and all that is happening every day, you would help us pray, come, Jesus, come. That, Lord, our hope would not be anything in this world, any sense of security other than what your Son has done for us as our God and our Savior, the one who gave up his life that we might have life everlasting, the one who rose from the grave so that we will rise. Death cannot even hold us down. Lord, in the midst of whatever the world throws at us each day, let this be our hope. And Lord, when that trumpet sounds, when the dead rise, help us, Lord, do all the work that you want us to do each day until that day. Use your church, everyone who claims the name of Jesus Christ as their Savior, to speak your good news in our world, even in the face of death and suffering. Help us be your messengers. Help us to live our lives not to our own glory, but to your glory. Lord, be with those who are suffering, those who are torn apart by war, those who are torn apart by greed, those who are suffering each day, Lord, because of the effects of sin being in our world, where there's sickness, where there's pain, where there's strife. Lord, into that darkness, bring your light the light of faith in Christ as the Savior. We pray as well, Lord, that you would solve those issues if it is your will, that you would bring peace, that you would bring healing. Especially, Lord, today we pray for those that we've named, praying that you would give them strong bodies yet again if that's your will. But praying most of all that your will be done. If they are to suffer, use their suffering to bring people to Christ. If they are to be healed, use the rest of their lives to bring people to Christ. That whether we live or we die, Lord, let us do everything to your glory and for the sake of growing your kingdom. And so we lift up these prayers to you today in Jesus' name and as he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you commuting out there in the pew, if you please would take your little kits out of the bag, the little cups, and hold them up in front of you at this time. Welcome to the Lord's table. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. For those communing in the pew, please take, eat, and drink the very body and blood of Christ given for you, and the rest of the congregation can have a seat. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was Black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin. He dwelt among men, my example is he. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering. Hands down. 
may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you all unto life everlasting. Depart in God's peace and in his joy. Amen. Sing our praises. you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
All right, I got two things, and then we're going to greet you up back there out in the hallway, just because, again, the kids are coming up. I uh, highly encourage you to grab the announcement bulletin back there. One thing that's not in there is about the cookie walk. Um, there is an updated sheet in the about the cookie walk in your, your pigeonholes over there. And with that, uh, we are going to be using the proceeds from it this year to support a family in our congregation that goes on the, on the uh, mission trip. Uh, so again, if you're interested in helping with that, these flyers are in your mailbox over there. What do we have for birthdays? No birthdays. All right. Well, we will greet you. Oh, Jody's got an announcement real quick. Uh, it's over there. Hold on one second. It's right over here in the pew. You're good. A quick, okay. I want to make a quick announcement about choir. If you're interested in singing in the choir for Christmas, we are going to be singing at the 4 o'clock Christmas Eve service. And we're starting practice a week from tomorrow. It will be Monday nights before the Monday night church service. At 6 o'clock, we should be done by 7 or 7.15 each night. Like I said, starting next week after Thanksgiving and then practicing every Monday night until Christmas. So please see me, and I'll put your name down, and the more the merrier. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Joy. All right, we'll greet you back there. Remember, parents, we have to kind of get out so that the kids can uh, get in here for practice. And there's lots of eggs. <laughs>